What's up guys, Chase here. I'm back. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, like I said, my name is Chase and I like to 3D print. I like to make cool props, projects. Build your dreams. You're here to do it. I'm here to teach you. So today, I'm going to be doing a revision on one of my old videos I made. It was my A to Z project. And it was pretty much how to scale and slice 3D prints. That's all I'm going to be touching on today because one, I switched to Orca Slicer, if you guys know what that is. And two, I learned some new tricks. So this one's going to be pretty short, but stick with it. Let's check it out and I'll show you what I've learned. What's up guys, we're on Thingiverse to start this video, which might not make any sense, but I promise you it'll make sense, just give me a chance. Sidebar here, something I wanted to show you that I've also learned since making my first video, are these, these sizing heads. I'm just going to touch on this briefly here, but my other videos I said you could measure your head or you could print a file that you already know fits, you know, other other ways of matching the size of a new file to your head so that way it fits this is another installment another way to do it so it's called a sizing head basically it's based off of the circumference of the top of your head as if you were wearing a hat or measuring for a hat so as you see here there's a bunch of different options here like for example head 2 is a 7 and an 8 size hat size all you have to do is measure your head and um, yeah, you can use these to compare, which I have now learned since, and I recommend you guys do too. But now, let's head on to uh, Orca Slicer, and I'll show you one Orca sl Slicer, two of the things you need to know to use it. Here we are in Orca Slicer. This is the open page. This is what you see at first. Uh, you have two options, create project, or create new project, and open project. And I'm going to tell you right now, even if I have a project in the works, I always hit new project. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just an idiot. So let's just the basics really quick. Honestly, these tabs really sum up what they are. But the things you need to know is right here is your presets for your printer. After you pick what printer you have, I have a K1 Max right here. And then they have the different options for it. Um, and then so I'm not even joking on the left here, all these all these options you can go very in depth with it you don't really need to especially not at first the only things I change right out the gate but you go to support here I turn on the tree auto I love tree supports and they are far superior on Orca slicer than they are on Creality print which I now know so I will share with you and then under strength the infill density if you're printing something that's not really a prop that's more like useful in, <laughs> in some sort of way um, rather than just to be cool which I prefer um, you can move this up it'll increase the amount of filament that's inside of your print walls and then I changed to gyroid uh, I just like it that's the only reason I don't have a I don't have a you know anything else to tell you but I like it so let me throw a helmet on here and let me show you uh, what I've learned All right guys I've loaded in the Crimson Thunder Ranger helmet which I have already made a full tutorial on this by the way not coincidentally go check it out to my other videos I love this helmet it's the first one I ever made a visor and you can tell but uh, yeah go ahead and go watch it I, I like that video it's pretty funny um, but let's go ahead and also add in the sizing head alright guys I went ahead and already added in the sizing head that I told you about in the beginning of the video um, so here's how I use it First of all, I like it to point to the front, like nose to the front. It really doesn't matter though. I only like that because that's where my helmet's normally pointing. It doesn't have to point there. That's just something I do. And then, so you go up here, hit the move tab. You can go up, down, side to side, front to back. Just hit the top, drag it down to where the chin is just barely over the base plate. That's where I like to put it. So you take your helmet. And then as you can see, as, as you, you can, can see, see, this bad boy is going to be a little uh, small. There are my ears sticking out. Um, you know, I, it, just, it just won't work. It's merged in my head. It's just not going to fit. So that is when we can start upping the scale of it to make sure it fits your head. So up here on the top, 
there's a scale button and if you have this checked which it will default be checked you can move it up so I type in 105 percent you see it grow um, I think it looks like it's going to be around the 110 mark uh, before it fits my head so move it up then you know move the helmet around see uh, so it's a lot closer looks like my head is in there or my theoretical head but it is smushed a little bit it's really tight so I figure if I go up let's go up to 112 that should be just roomy enough I could probably squeeze my massive head in there so yeah, there's something I learned with the sizing heads. Once again, it's just a guide. It's not going to be exactly your head just because it matches your sizing head, but it's going to be really close and it's going to help. But let's get rid of that. You just drag it off, click it, hit delete, whatever you want, really. So, uh-oh, look out. All right, so back to talking about things I've learned on Orca Slicer and the things that you may like to know. First of which... So you have it right here, you want to move it. There are these two tabs. You have the move tab, which you saw me use already, which you can go up, back, or side to side. And there's the rotate tab, or you can rotate like that, rotate like this, rotate like this. It's great. But here's a cool new tool that may be on Creality Print, but I never used. So click on your model. You want to go to this tab right here. It's called Lay on Face, if you see it up here. Click on that. And you're going to have this monstrosity in front of you. Chase, what do I do? What did you get me into? Check this out. If I want it to be on this face, I click that button. It's laying perfectly there. If I wanted to tilt it back, here's a face right here. Click it. Tilt it back. Perfect. Ready to go. All I have to do is rotate it. And then I could slice it like that if I wanted to. It's awesome. See it like this. So the other thing about Creality Print or I mean about Orca Slicer, excuse me, I'm going to set it like this, is they have far superior tree supports. And I think I'm the only person on the planet of the earth that taught anybody how to enable tree supports on Creality Print. <laughs> but here we are on Orca Slicer, it is much better. So uh, as you saw over here on the support tab on the side, tree auto is already selected. So I'm going to go ahead and slice it for you so you can see it with the default tree supports. We are back. Tree supports are supported. <laughs> Let's check them out. So the first thing that I like, I will say, I like that this brim is supported because when I printed it the first time, that was a tough area to, uh, you know, deal with. Um, this side as well. Then all these side, they're kind of like grills. And then the, the horn is also supported by itself, which it, I know it wasn't on Creality Print, which is great. Uh, even the tip right here is supported, and the inside up here has a little support, which I like. And then you got this whole jumbled mess, which is up there. But I'm going to show you how to modify this a little bit. Honestly, this would probably print fine. Um, it looks like a lot to me, but it probably would. But let me show you some things that I would like to change and how to change them. So right now we're on the preview tab after you slice. You go over here to prepare, and you're back to your Nike helmet. So... This is what I do when I want to change that in any way is I right click on the helmet after you have it selected. You're going to want to hit add support enforcer if you want to add some, some supports. So I will show you a spot where I would like to add supports and I always do a cylinder. There's really no reason why, but once it's imported in, it's going to act like you just put another 3d file on there. So to move it, you're going to hit the move button so you can bring it up like right here on the corner of the helmet. Whoops, I would like to have it a little more just to make sure it prints all the way. I'd just be a little nervous about it. So you can put it right there. You can always resize it using the same buttons like you had before, like right there. So now let me go ahead and, you know what, I'll also show you. If you want to support blocker, let's say like at the top, we could go for a cube this time. It really doesn't matter. So you go over here. So use this tab so you can see, move it up and then over and then get that in there somewhere. Let's make sure, let's check it out. Yes, and then I would like to use this up the scale. Um, let's go to 500, make this big old square. So now everywhere that that square is, 
Okay, I'll make it a little smaller. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You can drag it. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video. I can make it quicker. Let's check it out and let's see the changes that we made. So go ahead and hit slice plate and I'll see you in a minute. I'm back. Slouching Chase here. I'm slouching. I don't even care. But uh, <laughs> hey, so remember the two things we added were the support blocker and the support enforcer. So let's check it up there. There's a little <laughs> ring around what we blocked, okay? And also, right here is where the enforcer was. See this green, dark green splotch there? That was added, so that's the difference. This is what it would be normally. These are the ones we added. And then you can take that to as intense or as, you know, wimpy. <laughs> as you need to, you know, to fit your needs. Those are some things I have changed in terms of how, to, how I slice and size my files. And so I figured I'd make a little update video. I was getting a lot of questions on Instagram. So guys, without further ado, I really appreciate you watching this video. I love teaching stuff like this because I'm honestly not the smartest guy, but I know I don't overcomplicate things. So if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments and please subscribe to me. You know, my channel's growing pretty well. And I'd like to continue, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.